Hi guys, uh, welcome to your first chemistry video. Um, in this video, we're going to go quickly through all of the materials that you could possibly use in the chemistry lab. So it's important that you are familiarize yourself with these items. Some of these things that are on this list we're not going to use. So to make, uh, for time purposes, I'll just eliminate them so we don't have to talk about them at all. Okay, so this first thing here is the thistle tube. Um, by the way, these notes are on page 16. This is the thistle tube. Okay, so we can go ahead and cross that guy off. We're not going to talk about him. The next one is a long stem funnel. Okay, uh, long stem funnels are important for when you have to separate out things. Okay, we also use them to get some things from one, like say it's like in a big bottle, but we want to get it into like a test tube. We can use a funnel for that. We have wet funnels, so things that um, are wet, like liquids, and then we ha also have dry funnels. And you'll notice that the um, end of the funnel is a little bit bigger to make it easier for the solid to go through. Okay, so a long stem funnel is just add add liquids to a flask. or smaller container, okay? Um, and we also use them in filtrations. Okay, the next thing that we see here is um, our graduated cylinder. So if I, was, if I was taking these notes, I would be writing funnel next to what the item is. The next thing is a graduated cylinder. And this guy, we this is our more precise measuring for liquids, okay? They have dashes in between each volume, so it makes it easier. And these come in multiple sizes, so this is a 100 milliliter and this is a 10 milliliter. We also have 50 and 25 milliliter graduated cylinders as well. So we can see that a graduated cylinder we use to measure liquids. Okay, so the next thing that we have here is our test tube. Okay, this is what we're going to use the most of the time. And obviously, you can see that we can do multiple things with test tubes. We can store chemicals inside of a test tube. Um, we can react to chemicals inside of a test tube. We can use it and hold it over a Bunsen burner and heat chemicals up inside of a test tube. So it does a lot of different things for us. Okay, the next thing that we have is this thing called a Florence flask. So it's named after some guy. Okay, and we don't use these a lot, okay, but sometimes I will store chemicals inside of them. You'll see that this is a kind of a round um, type flask. They're used primarily to like evaporate things off, but you probably won't see one of these again until you take organic chemistry. Okay, after the Florence flask, you've probably have seen these before. These are called Erlenmeyer flasks. Okay, let me take a step back here. Okay, so the Florence flask, which is what I just did, it heats reactions, which is what I said, stores chemicals, um, and it also heats substances evenly, okay? The Erlenmeyer flask can do the same thing, okay? It heats reactions, stores chemicals, and if we are boiling something like water, sometimes we wanna use an Erlenmeyer flask instead of a beaker, because what happens is a lot of the water can't escape the Erlenmeyer flask because of its narrow top. So the water falls back in and it, it makes the water um, heat up faster or whatever you're heating up faster. It doesn't necessarily have to be water. Okay, the next guy that we have right here, this is called an evaporating dish, okay? And you can kind of tell that it's kind of made out of ceramic, okay? It's called an evaporating dish. And what we use an evaporating dish for is if we're needing to heat something to higher temperatures than what glass can handle. Okay, so an evaporating dish is allows us to evaporate liquids over a flame. Okay, crucible and lid also allows us to do this as well. So go ahead and write down the, what the crucible and lid does. It allows solids to be heated to extremely high temperatures. Okay, so this is our crucible and this is our lid. Okay, so we use these two things because we can put solids in here to evaporate off water if the solid has water on it. And most of the time when we use a crucible, we have to put the lid to the side a little bit like this, okay, to allow that water to escape the crucible. Okay, so this guy right here is our crucible and lid, and I always spell crucible wrong, 
Sorry, bad chemistry teacher. The uh, see, I almost did it. Crucible and lid. So I wouldn't expect you to know how to spell them either. So that may help you. Okay, these next two things um, is a reagent bottle and a wide mouth bottle. I'm not so concerned that you guys know um, these two by name, but just realize that if you see a bottle, more than likely it has chemicals in it, um, especially if you're inside of the chemistry lab. And most of the time, these guys will be labeled. Okay, so this would obviously hold something that can't um, be in touch with light, and that's why it's a darker bottle. But most of the time, you'll see things in here. And one thing about these bottles is if you take chemicals out, do not put it back in. You're going to contaminate my substances. Okay, so those are um, the two reagent bottles, but don't worry about writing anything down for them. The next thing here is our buddy, the beaker. Okay, now here's the thing. The beaker does not measure liquids. Everybody repeat it. Does not measure liquids, okay? Beakers are not appropriate with their measurement. They are not good. So like this says 500 milliliters plus or minus 5%. That's a lot of percent that this beaker is allowed to be off of that 500 milliliters. So we're not gonna use a beaker when I say measure out 250 milliliters of water. We're not using a beaker. We're using a graduated cylinder, okay? There's multiple sizes of these beakers, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so beakers um, react chemicals. They heat substances. Most of the time it's going to be water. And they mix, we use them to mix chemicals. Never to measure chemicals. I repeat, never to measure chemicals. Okay, awesome. The next one is a mortar and pestle. So this is a mortar and pestle. Okay, and you probably have seen these before, especially if you watch certain shows or certain movies. Um, this is what we use if we have a solid and we need it in smaller pieces. We can put it here and crush down our solid so we can dissolve it into water. Okay, so a mortar and pestle obviously grinds up chemicals. Okay, the next thing is a burette clamp. Okay, now this one is a little bit different. Burette clamp. And obviously, if it's a burette clamp, it's going to hold a burette. Okay? And we're going to get to this guy here in a second, but this is what it would go on to. Okay? And ultimately, a burette would be able to fit inside of this. Okay? So obviously, a burette clamp holds a burette to a ring stand, which we'll get to a ring stand here in a second. Okay? The next thing is crucible tongs. Tongs. Okay. Now, crucible tongs, we talked about the crucible before. Crucible tongs aren't just regular tongs, okay? So crucible tongs have that, it's like a little diamond, okay? And it's perfect because what can happen is it can hold our crucible because remember what we use a crucible for is to heat things up. So when I take it away from the heat, I definitely don't want to touch it because it's metal and it'll be hot, okay? So we'll need to use crucible tongs for that. So obviously, a crucible tongs or crucible tongs, are used to handle crucibles, um, and it can also be used to handle other things, but we tend to only use it to handle crucibles, okay? The next one, I bet you could figure this out, especially if you were just talking about crucible tongs. This is a test tube holder. Okay, and obviously a test tube holder is going to hold test tubes. I hold test tubes. Okay, so you can write that down. And then the next one is the beaker tong. And same thing here. You'll notice that these aren't just like regular tongs because we need them to be able to go like this and hold our beaker. Okay, and again, remember, we can heat things up in our beaker, so we need something to take it away from the heat so we ourselves don't get hurt. Okay, so you can go ahead and write holds beakers. Okay, the next thing is our ring stand an iron ring? Okay, and what these guys are used, so the ring stand is actually the thing that we put, can put multiple things on, so it kind of looks like this, okay? And the ring stand obviously can hold our burette clamp, like we talked about before, so this guy can go on to like this, okay? And it can also hold our iron ring, 
Okay. Now our iron ring can hold something called a clay triangle, which we're going to get to here in a second. So I'll just show you here. Okay. So obviously I'm not going to use this iron ring to hold this beaker because it's a little bit flimsy. Okay. So what we use is these things called clay triangle, which we'll write a definition down for a second. The iron ring goes onto the iron, onto the ring stem, like so. Okay. And then we can take our clay triangle, put it here. Next thing, wire gauze, which I'll also talk about, or I'm sorry, clay triangles are for our crucibles. This clay triangle is a little bit big, but most of the time the crucible can fit on the clay triangle and that way we can heat it here. Okay. Or and take the clay triangle off. We can use wire gauze. Okay. Which we'll talk about too. I'll write, I'll get a definition down, put it on top of our clay and put the, the beaker right there. This one's a little bit flimsy but that's okay you guys get the point I would never want you to put a flimsy or use a flim flimsy wire gauze I just happened to grab a bad one okay so a ring stand okay obviously you can write your own definition for that this guy up here is what I was just talking about this is a clay triangle let me move this out of the way clay triangle Clay triangle holds crucibles in place, okay? So it holds a crucible over the flame, okay? Obviously, this is clay because we don't want the metal to burn. Never pull a crucible off after you've been um, heating it because it's going to hurt your hands. Okay, next thing. Bunsen burner, obviously, makes fire. Okay, Bunsen burner is right here. Okay, um, before we use a Bunsen burner, we'll talk about how it's used. These are one of my favorite things because it's fire, and I like fire. Okay, Bunsen burner. And you'll notice how nicely it goes underneath our ring stand like this. It can just sit there, okay? So we'll talk more about that when we get to a Bunsen burners. Okay, we're going to go ahead and skip a couple things here. We're not going to do a pinch clamp. We can skip that. Forceps, obviously, you could probably guess. Forceps are used to like pick up solids that I don't want you to touch. Okay, so those are forceps. These are rubber stoppers. They just close um, chemicals that we don't want going out into the air. Um, this is a watch glass. Okay. Watch glasses, if they're the right size, especially if we're boiling water, we can put it over our beaker like this. Okay, so that's a watch glass. Okay, this guy I just showed you, this is the um, wire gauze with ceramic on it. So wire gauze. That's what we put on top of our iron ring so we could heat up water in our beaker. Okay, this is filter paper. Obviously, filter paper is going to help us separate liquids and solids. Um, test tube brush. We can skip this. This is a scupula. Another one of my favorite things, okay? It's used for a spoon, okay, scupula. Pipette is another thing that we use on a regular basis. And we use plastic ones. Um, so when you use a pipette once, unless it's attached to a chemical, you just throw it away, okay? It makes it easy for me. And then this guy right here is called a burette, okay? We won't see burettes until the end of the year uh, when we talk about acids and bases. And then lastly, the two last two things, this is a wash bottle, test tube holder. Okay, and I bet you could figure out what those things are. Wash bottles only ever have distilled water on them because we only, in chemistry, only deal with um, reactions with distilled water. And then our test tube holder obviously holds our test tubes, okay? So before I run out of time here on this, I'm going to show all of these so you can pause and write down what I quickly went through. If you have any questions, make sure you um, ask them with your form. Thanks, guys.